Now, I think content to content also hints at the future of content consumption. I'm going to give you a rather dry example. If you haven't had a chance to use Notebook LM and audio overviews already, I highly, highly encourage it. That's how I like consume an insane amount of academic research. But imagine personalized weekly podcasts for your employees, right? Like you take all your all hands videos, you take all your emails, all your presentations, and bam, you get this easy to digest summary. And I think this is the shape of where content is going. Personalized, dare I say disposable and made just in time. And it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, some enterprise use case or you're building a new kind of podcast that you subscribe to. I think you can reimagine how you deliver content in a personalized fashion. Now, even before we fully automate this, uh, take my friends Rowan Shuang and Varun Maya as examples. I believe they built what I call the fastest breaking news to Instagram reel pipeline in the tech media game. So where most other channels are like busy reposting the same like PR approved assets as a text post or a blog, they've already got a video out there on Instagram that's like meeting people where they are and giving them content to an, in an easy to digest fashion. And they're not doing anything fancy. They're using HeyGen, Eleven Labs, and essentially eliminating themselves as the bottleneck. They're still human editors and producers that are doing all of the, you know, bringing it all together. But given where MCP is going, you can imagine even those processes will be automated and the VLM will be capable of using, uh, you know, Premiere or DaVinci Resolve for you. The best part about all of this is that their audience doesn't even care that it's AI. A lot of creators are worried that, oh my God, what if I put a defake version of myself? Like, where is the authenticity? You're delivering them a news bite. And if it's valuable, they're absolutely going to consume it. And I think the numbers speak for themselves. Similar things happening in the advertising game. You know, this company that Adobe just acquired made this personalized campaign in India where basically every single ad was like, you know, uh, uh, tailored to these 2,500 local businesses. So when you saw the ad, it referred the local shop where you could go buy Cadbury products by name. Just imagine where advertising is going to go. Speaking of where this is going, I mean, I men mentioned this notion of disposable, you know, dynamic content. You can start injecting you know, sort of the context of your user, their needs, their preferences, almost as if somebody made a piece of media, whatever that piece of media is for them on the platform they're choosing to consume it. It's not going to be static, but it's not just video stuff too, right? Like we talked about location-based AR and historically we talk about, oh, if we want to build like, you know, location-based tour guide experience, how are we going to create this content at scale? Now you take these visual language models that have insane world knowledge, take something like VPS, use something like, you know, the Google Maps API as tool use and then text to speech. And you can make that tour for their AR glasses or just their freaking phone with a pair of AirPods, like on the fly. That's really, really wild. But just don't just take my word for it. If you ask Jensen Huang, and I had the chance to ask him this at GTC last year, he thinks we're five to 10 years out from fully generative AI games. And that every pixel in the future is going to be generated and not rendered. Now, obviously, he's got a vested interest in it. Jensen trying to sell a lot of GPUs. But I actually think it's a very, very tame prediction, especially when you look at some of the recent research that's coming out. Sorry, can we play this video? Oh, there we go. Uh, coming out, uh, such as uh, this one coming out of Google papers called Genie 2. You take a photo and then suddenly you get a minute of a playable world. And I think another leading indicator or another sign that this shift is happening is if you take some of the 3D first AI startups that exist, like Luma and Odyssey, they've all switched to video diffusion as the path to interactive worlds. And uh, literally the Odyssey CEO replied to my tweet yesterday saying Jensen is always right. So there you have it. What this also means is the lines between software and content are blurring, right? You can already code things up faster than it would have taken you to make it in Blender or Cinema 4D. Here's an example. I vibe coded this thing in Claude and I literally felt like a creative director or product manager. I was like, write a PRD for this. And then, hey, tech lead, I want you to sequence this out. No, cut these features. And then I ended up with this really cool visualization. See over here. And then I ran it through Runway to reskin it to make it look like Legos. I didn't even touch Blender. Like that's mind blowing to me. So you can just imagine where these capabilities will be in just another year. So what I think that means is that in this future, instead of getting lost in the details and endless variations, you'll start authoring content at this higher level of abstraction. And the best analogy that comes to my mind right now is sort of, you know, HTML and the document object model or a 3D scene graph if you're a 3D nerd. 
And it's going to start with the examples that I gave you, last mile customization, you know, all the drudgery that agencies are doing today, tailoring creatives or ads to like different platforms, viewers and interests. But at some point, you'll be able to create a lot of content on demand. So the way to maybe think about it is we're not just building content anymore. We're building systems and workflows that do the creation for us. And then video or 3D or audio is just the means for final delivery. 